Hey legends, Blake here with another video and today might be a bit problematic because I'm um, stay at home dadding at the moment. So I've got uh, baby Harry here and he, I've tried to distract him with the new life spectrum rattle, but it's not working that well. In any case, we've got the top 10 most hardy slash unkillable fish for beginners or experienced aquarists alike. So let's jump straight into the list. Now, I do just want to say before getting into the list that just because these fish are hardy definitely doesn't mean that you should keep them in a bucket of water or you should test it out by just pouring a bunch of bleach in your aquarium or anything ridiculous like that. Just because a fish is hardy doesn't mean that they don't deserve an appropriately sized uh, accommodation or aquarium, uh, adequate filtration, and if required, a heater. So definitely consider those things, but the list is mainly just to sort of Give a list if, if you've picked up a few fish and you've really struggled, you're kind of getting a little bit disheartened and you just want a species that's going to be an easy win, going to just give you that enjoyment to reinvigorate your love for the hobby or, or get your love deepened into the hobby. So that's, that's the purpose of what we're trying to achieve today. Number one on the list, I think, is the absolute hands down most unkillable fish that I've ever kept and that is Medaka rice fish or Japanese rice fish. Uh, these fish can get down to crazy temperatures. Uh, they stay alive in even frozen over ponds. I've kept them outdoors throughout the entire winter here and I live in the bottom of Australia where it actually gets quite cold. Not to freezing temperatures but still pretty cold and they did perfectly fine. Uh, they eat pretty much anything. They're um, good surface dwellers as well so mini ponds and stuff they'll do perfectly fine in. and uh, these days they come in a lot of different colors so um, Madaka rice fish are really awesome they also have some pretty cool behavior too carrying the eggs on the outside of their body but uh, pretty much any type of water any temperature throw them in and you'll do really fine number two on the list is zebra danios really active fish super affordable uh yeah great behavior schooling fish so you can get quite a few of them and it's just a fun time uh they're egg scatterers so uh, you can quite easily breed them as well in captivity you can get different varieties these days long fin varieties and so forth uh in terms of hardiness the long fin varieties can get some fin rod and things like that as you do expect with some more long fin varieties of fish but uh, for the most part you can keep them unheated so long as you live in a temperate environment uh, in any case like you might just need to drop a little heater in there over winter or something like that so uh, again really versatile diet and um, wide range of water parameters because a lot of them these days are captive bred as well which does help to um, make a fish more hardy for sure number three bristlenose plecos uh, i am guilty of removing substrate from aquariums and finding little baby uh, bristlenose plecos alive in buckets of water that um, you know, I've just been sitting in the corner of the fish room with no food and no nothing for way too long. Uh, of course, I'd never do that on purpose, but uh, just goes to show that they are super, super bulletproof. Pretty much the only thing that bristlenose plecos don't like is heat. Uh, they'll tolerate anything else. Uh, or they don't really like salt that much either, but uh, for the most part, um, any water will be t perfectly fine. They do, of course, need some veggie matter in the diet, so feed them some algae wafers and stuff like that. But uh, bristlenose are really, really awesome fish um, and super, super hardy. Next one on the list is white cloud mountain minnows, another one that can definitely go unheated um, and really, really wide open on the diet. Um, again it's a bit of a shoaling fish so keep them in groups of 10 or more but in any old water will do perfectly fine white cloud mountain minnows are actually basically extinct in the wild at this point so pretty much the only ones that you are going to get have been bred in captivity which again uh, means that they're going to be really accepting of a whole bunch of different water parameters so white cloud mountain minnows again really affordable too next one on the list cherry barbs a lot of the barbs actually are pretty pretty bulletproof but in particular cherry barbs uh egg scatterer again but um really nice coloration and a bit of a larger size if you're looking for something that is a bit bigger than the others on the list so far cherry barbs can be a bit nippy when it comes to 
other fish so be mindful of what you're going to house them with but if you do a barb only tank again you don't really need to put a heater in there they're not really susceptible to a lot of the common diseases and um yeah just uh, again a, a fish that's just a just add water fish and and you'll be perfectly fine so cherry barbs certainly recommended for beginners number six on the list uh of course betters or siamese fighting fish um these guys although i certainly don't recommend it are often sold in cups which tells you exactly how hardy they are in terms of the most hardy of the better splendors which are the ones that you're going to commonly find at any old fish store uh shorter fin varieties i find are more hardy than longer fin first of all they are able to get around the aquarium a lot easier which just makes finding food and, and generally expending energy a lot easier and the shorter fins is obviously going to mean that they're less susceptible to fin rot you know a, a nice placard better or a female better it's going to be super super bulletproof now of course definitely keep them with a filter and a heater and get them out of those cups immediately but once you do you'll find yourself a nice little happy companion to keep and um yeah anything from a five gallon slash 20 liter tank and up you'll have a great old time throw some live plants in there and yeah the rest is history next one i'd say if you want some breeding action maybe a bit more naturally than the egg scatterers that we've talked about so far then platys are super super hardy uh very artist platys in particular uh way more hardy and are accepting of less hardness in the water than your um, ordinary platys so to tell the difference a quick rule of thumb is very artist platys are going to have more of a shininess more of a shimmeriness to the to them than sort of the more matte colors of the other platys so um find yourself some nice sunset platys or uh, there's a whole bunch of different types but as long as they have sort of a shimmeriness to the scales you're pretty safe in that you've found some very artist platys and those guys can also go unheated as well for huge portions of the year uh, depending on where you live so various plate is pretty awesome and of course live bearers so they will naturally have babies as long as you've got some nice um, foliage and, and cover for their babies to hide because of course like any fish they're going to eat anything smaller than their mouths so uh, various plate are definitely worth a go <laughs> next one on the list might seem a little bit funny but cherry shrimp now cherry shrimp i want to preface this by saying locally bred cherry shrimp because um cherry shrimp can become accustomed to different uh water localities like for example when i first got into cherry shrimp i ordered mine from sydney and i live in sort of melbourne so uh, there's a different totally different water parameters sydney has quite hard water i believe whereas melbourne has quite soft water and i did struggle with cherry shrimp for a few generations until they got used to my water However, if you do find a local breeder of cherry shrimp, you'll soon find that once again, you know, they can occasionally appear in buckets of water in the corner of your uh, fish room after a water change or a substrate change or things like that. So um, cherry shrimp, once they're, once they're used to what you're putting them in, they can be absolutely bulletproof and uh, yeah, just, just absolute survivalist machines. So if you're looking to get into the cherry shrimp game or you have uh have limit if you've had limited success in the past find yourself a nice little local breeder pick up some of theirs and put them in a well-established tank and uh you, you should have a heap of success with them number nine on the list is another anabantoid and that is gouramis in particular dwarf gouramis or honey gouramis now being an anabantoid same as a better they actually take the oxygen from the water surface, not through their gills. So that means that they're gonna be a lot more forgiving if there is any of that sort of um, cycle mishap that can happen in beginners aquariums. Like if you've got a little bit of ammonia buildup or some nitrite, um, these, these kind of fish are gonna be a lot um, more accepting of that kind of thing. So they'll certainly accept you know, a wide variety of, of water parameters as a result of simply their their um, genetics and their biology easy to feed uh, they'll accept a whole bunch of foods they make a great little centerpiece fish as well plenty of color and um overall just very undemanding fish and you get a lot of reward back for that so for those reasons i think uh garamis make excellent fish for beginners and super hardy additions to the aquarium 
Number 10 on the list, uh, Corydoras catfish. Of course, they're an armored catfish, which you know adds a, a layer of uh, defense to their body. So they're gonna be less prone to nicks and grazes and things like that. The only area that they are likely to develop something like that and, and a possible infection is on their barbells. So make sure that you don't keep them on a really sharp substrate because they do like to sift through the bottom for little morsels and crustaceans to eat. Other than that, um, Corydoras, again, especially like uh, bronze quarries and pepper quarries, a lot of those are locally bred these days. So they're gonna be accustomed to um, captivity, really adaptable to feeding as well, except a wide range of foods. So overall, Cory, Cory cats are, are just a fun time to put into your aquarium. They accept a whole bunch of different parameters and yeah, there's not too much that'll really fuss a Cory cat. So that rounds out the list of 10 most hardy slash unkillable fish for beginners or aquarists alike. If you think I missed anything, be sure to help your fellow aquarists down below in the comments. If you did like the video, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. And other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.